In Episode 6 of the Build a Real Robot series, we'll take a look at power distribution. After we examine the wiring diagram, we'll look at the components I'm using to wire up the DB1 robot. The electricity is flowing today, so welcome to the workshop. Hello and welcome to the workshop and to episode 6 on the series on building a real robot. And my real robot, DB1, is in two pieces again. And you'll notice the pieces look a bit different. They've got these connectors on the side of the tower. There's a plexiglass uh, plate on the back of the robot over here with a fancy connector on it. Not sure if you can see the fancy connector. And inside the robot there are a number of terminal strips. There are some new wires with connectors on them and that's because what we're going to discuss today is power distribution. Now getting electricity around to the different sections of the robot is obviously very important. Without electricity nothing obviously would work. And the electricity source is going to be the batteries that will be mounted in the compartment over here and it's going to be distributed throughout the robot through a series of cables and connectors etc. And we're going to go and discuss that today. So I'm going to show you a schematic of how this is wired, then I'll show you some of the parts I'm using and show you the actual wiring on the robot. Uh, we're also going to address a few of the questions that I've gotten on the website. I love the dialogue that's occurring on the website with all of the articles that accompany these videos, as well as the dialogue on YouTube. And I've been able to respond to a bit of it, but not all of it. There have been some common questions, and so I'm going to address a few of those today and continue to do that. Now you'll also notice that the black piece of plexiglass that had the circuit cards on it that we dealt with last week is missing. It's not going to be used today. It'll come back into play in the next episode when we start hooking things up and making things actually happen on the robot. So let's start off by looking at the schematic diagram for the wiring and then we'll come back and take a look at the components themselves. Now here's a schematic of the wiring that we're going to be working on today. Now I know it might look a little bit complex and scary, but it's not really. So let's break it down into sections to make it a bit easier to understand. We'll begin with the power source itself. Now I've got a 5 volt DC and a 12 volt DC power source. Now keep in mind this is not going to be the actual battery voltage, but this will be the voltage after it has been regulated. And the 5 volt, the 12 volt, and the ground all go out to a 6 terminal terminal strip that is located down in the battery compartment. Next we're going to connect a 12 volt, a 5 volt, and a ground connection to the board that we looked at last week, the power distribution board that's on the rear of the base. This connection will be done directly to the terminal strips down in the battery compartment. The next connection will be to a 12 terminal strip that is mounted in the front. Now the 12 terminal strip has been divided into three sections of four terminals each. And so we have four terminals for 5 volts, four for ground, and four for the 12 volts. This will also be wired directly to the terminal strips that are located in the battery compartment base. And then finally the connections to the tower, the top, the middle, and the lower terminal strips. Now these are connected again to the 12 volt, ground, and 5 volts. Keep in mind that these connections also have small Molex connectors so that I can disconnect the tower when I need to. So that's the wiring. Now we'll take a look at some of the components we'll use and then the wiring itself. So I'm going to be using a number of connectors and accessories when I wire up the robot. I wanted to show you some of them. Now this is a 12 position uh, terminal strip, so of course the connections go this way on this as they always do. And these are bus bars that can fit on the back of the terminal strip to join them together. Now if you remember in the schematic I'm actually wiring 5 volts ground and 12 volts to the same strip. These are the ones that are going to be mounted throughout the robot. So I've taken some of these bus bars and I'm going to cut them into groups of four so that I can join four of these at a time. So there'll be four 12 volt, four grounds, and four 5 volts on each one. 
They also come with these uh, little tops that snap onto them. I may or may not use them. I can just see those loosening up and falling off and they really serve no benefit because I'm not wiring any very high voltages, but I just wanted to show you they do exist. Same deal for these. These are the six uh, terminal ones, and these are even bigger. They're heavy-duty ones that are going to be mounted in the bottom. And this is where all of the main wiring for the 5 volt, the 12 volt, and the ground are going to go. And again, they have these bus bars, which I'm going to be using. The bus bars also offer another opportunity, because when I do finally put batteries onto the robot, I may find that I don't want to power all of the 5 volt lines from the same set of batteries. I might want to use alternate ones. And by this bus bar arrangement, I can remove the bus bars and just send power directly to the terminals and distribute the power that way. So if I have to use, let's say, a series of buck converters, rather than using one big one, I might use three small ones and then just distribute the, uh, the electricity accordingly by removing the bus bars. So they make things very versatile. Now these back here are half inch rubber grommets. I use these throughout the robot because any place I'm passing any wires through the Actobotics channeling, I want to put a grommet. They fit perfectly into those holes in the channeling. And if you're using a different set of channeling or something, obviously you'd want to use a different size. But the idea is I never want wires or cables rubbing directly against the aluminum on the chassis because there's a possibility that after time they might fray or something. This is what they call an aviation connector and this mates with the connector at the back of the robot. Now the connector at the back of the robot is sort of a dual purpose. It has a temporary purpose which it has right now and then it will have another purpose and the temporary purpose is to take the 12 volts and the 5 volts that I'm going to be feeding externally to start off with and that's going to be coming from just a bench power supply, actually the ATX power supply that you may have seen me build in a recent video is going to supply power to the robot during the development phase and it'll be delivered through that. The aviation connectors come in all sorts of sizes. These are actually waterproof and everything. I don't really need the waterproof aspect but what I do like is the large contacts on here. They can handle quite a bit of current. It's something like 35 amperes which is well beyond what I'll ever need. Uh, the mating one of course is right now on the back of the DB1 robot on the piece of plexiglass I put there. And these connectors, these are 2.8 millimeter uh, three pin connectors and you need to crimp the connectors on these are the uh, the male pins and they go into this shell over here and the female ones would go into this shell and they just kind of mate together like this and they have a little hook to keep themselves together and I'm using these because I don't want to directly wire from the bottom to the tower because the tower itself is going to have to come off and go on a number of times during development and it would be a real hassle to have to disconnect all of the wires so I'm sending all three wires at 12 volts the uh, 5 volts in the ground into these connectors wherever it connects to the tower so those three terminal strips up there are connecting to these connectors over here and these finally are just the lugs that I'm using to connect onto the terminal strips. I believe these are called fork lugs and I've got them just with a red and a blue shell so both the 12 volt and the 5 volts are going to use the red shell and the ground the uh, blue shell. I'm using white wire for the um, 12 volts, black wire for the ground and red wire for the 5 volts. Of course any colors of wire and any types of terminals you want to use would really make no difference at all. And so now that you've seen some of the parts I'm using, let's take a look at the actual wiring on the DB1 robot. So here is the base unit uh, as it stands right now. Now I haven't connected the back connector up yet. As I just said, the back connector is initially going to be used to supply power for the robot. So it'll be connected to the three uh, different terminal strips over here. Once that has been replaced by batteries and the batteries will go over here, then this will be supplying power to charge the batteries. So it's a dual purpose connector. Now these of course are just the connectors from the motor you've seen those before. 
Now on the bottom here, if you can see, I've got the three large terminal strips. And so this is my 12 volts, this is my ground, and this is my five volts. And I've got all of the wires coming out uh, from the terminal strips to distribute to the various parts of the robot. These top ones are not connected yet because they're just going to be going to the wires that will power the uh, components that are on the plate that sits above here, which isn't in place at the moment. Now, as you see, I've wired some connectors over here and over here, and these will go up to the tower. I'll be showing you the tower in a moment. And I want you to observe that I've placed the wires through these grommets over here. So everywhere they go, they go through the grommets. And they're also set so that they go above the axle over here. I wanted to make very sure that none of the wires ever could come into contact with any moving parts. So I've got them going over the axle. Over here they're going under because this of course is where the tower is going to be mounting so the wires need to take a trip underneath there. I've also secured these ones here with tie wraps. Now this is a set of wires, one of which is going to this motor and the other one is going to the underside here which so let me flip this over and show you. We've got yet another terminal strip, and this is the front one. So this will be powering any of the electronics that I use at the front of the robot. And otherwise, I suppose, once we still have this upside down, you can sort of see at the back over here, uh, I don't know if you can see that too clearly where I've got the wires distributed to uh, go to the different terminal strips over here. So this is actually, I, I like this because the uh, wiring is very accessible and it's, uh, it's, I think, fairly neat so that when I need to do any troubleshooting, it's very easy to get at all the wires. Also, as I'd said, I may be removing these bus strips eventually, one or the other, or maybe both of them, and individually powering some of these segments. So it leaves me a lot of options here, and I've left enough space here so that I have room for the lugs and there's no chance of them interfering with any of the moving parts parts over here. So let's put this aside and now look at the tower wiring. And so here is the tower and I'm hoping you can see the tower. I'll actually put it side by side. Here's the wiring that is going for the top uh, section of the tower. Now you may wonder why I didn't put it over here and the reason is I don't want any of the wiring interfering with this turntable. And then over here on this side we've got the wiring that is going to uh, distribute power to the two uh, sections in the uh, middle and on the bottom over here which of course will contain all sorts of electronics. The bottom here will have all the intelligence electronics so to speak and this will be all the sensor uh, electronics and so the power distributes to them and that power is wired out again through grommets over to the back here where you can uh, it's a little hard to see, I know, where you can see these connectors over here that uh, will mate with the ones that are uh, on the base unit so that I can remove the tower without having to constantly uh, unwire things from here, which would be a real drag. And the wiring I'm using over here, I've used 18 gauge cable because I happen to have it. If you have 16, that might even be a bit better. But it's not going to be carrying any appreciable amount of voltage. It's going to be carrying a reasonable amount of current, but nothing that 18 gauge won't handle. And the 18 gauge wire is quite easy to use with all of the connector lugs and that. So. That is, in a nutshell, the wiring of the power distribution for the DB1 robot. Alright, well that about covers everything we need to cover for wiring today. Now, after you've done all of your wiring and hooked up all of your connectors and terminals, it's vital that you go through everything with a multimeter and make sure that you've got good connections and that you haven't reversed any connections anywhere or shorted anything out because, of course, that would be catastrophic when you actually apply power to the robot. Now, as I said, I'm going to be using a separate power supply initially, but I do actually have a very 
very good idea of what batteries I'm going to be using for the robot. I've been doing a lot of research into that and we will be looking at batteries a little bit later on. But what we're going to look at next week is the motor controller. Now I've had a number of questions about the motor controller. The most common one being, why are you using a separate set of Arduinos when you have a perfectly good Arduino Mega over there which could control the motors quite easily and has extra interrupts that it could read the rotary encoder from? And that is a very valid question which I'm afraid you're going to have to wait till next week for me to answer because I do indeed have an answer for that and it will explain the design philosophy that I'm using throughout this robot. Now also my design philosophy may not be your design philosophy and so feel free as I said at the very beginning of this series not to use this as necessarily a step-by-step -step to building a robot but as some inspiration for building your own robot which you may want to configure in a different way that's perfectly fine as well. Now as I said at the beginning of the video I've got a few questions that I've been asked on the website and on the YouTube channel. I'm going to address a couple of them right now anyway that basically have something to do with power distribution. A lot of them have to do with the little board that I showed you last week, the one that I wired up to distribute power on the top shelf of the uh, robot, at least on the back shelf of the robot, excuse me, to all the different circuit cards. And one question was, what type of connectors did I use for the motors? In other words, what did I use to hook the uh, the motor cables onto? Well, and the obvious answer is I used the ones that mate with these cables, but uh, rather than being sarcastic like that, they are 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors. So that's the type of connector I use. And I had to drill through the perf board in order to mount them. I soldered wire to the back of them and then I held them in place with epoxy. Now, of course, if you're making a printed circuit board for this, you would just have a hole the right size and be able to solder them in and they'd look very pretty and they'd hold themselves very nicely. But in my case, the epoxy is what's going to hold them into place. Another question is about the fusing that I'm going to be used. Now the answer is I do and I don't know. I do know what fuses I want to use for the motors. And basically the motors I'm using have a 9.2 ampere stall current. So at 9.2 amperes, if they're drawing that, we've got a lot of problems and they should never actually get anywhere near 9.2 amperes. So what I intend to use is a 9 amp fast blow fuse. Now I don't actually have a 9 amp fast blow fuse in stock but I need to make a trip to my local electronics store so despite the fact that it's mid-April we've still got a ton of snow out there I don't know why we shouldn't but we do once that clears I'm going to venture out of the house and actually make it down to the electronics store and do some shopping I'm like a kid in the candy store in those places uh, otherwise I've been ordering everything for DB1 online one other thing I wanted to show you before we go uh, some of you may have seen the video that I did last last week where I gave a tour of this workshop that I'm in and one thing I didn't cover in that was some of my storage things and I have some specific storage things for my DB1 components that I think are really neat and it's a little off track of what we're doing but I did want to show you them they're behind me right now I got these things on Amazon I've got two of them over here there's this one over here and uh, one that's uh, much taller than that, this one over here. But these are really neat. Let me show you how these work. I've got, as you can hopefully see, all of my DB1 parts in here. And they've got a lid, and the lid fastens everything down really securely. You can carry these around without worrying about the parts moving from one drawer to the other. This is where I've got a lot of the screws and brackets and uh, little things, and I've got bigger ones than this one. You open this up by unlocking it like this, and then you can get at it. And these drawers also all remove, so you can take them out when you're working on them. I've actually got one out over here that I've been using this to store some of the tools uh, that I've been using uh, for working on DB1. And I find these really, really handy. Now, as I said, I got these on Amazon. They're part of their Amazon Basics line. I have a lot of Amazon Basics stuff because I like that stuff. But uh, they're not the only ones who make these. I've seen that Stanley and DeWalt also make similar uh, devices like this for storing things. And it's really handy to be able to have all of my robot parts, all of the different size screws and fasteners and things and all the 
brackets and stuff that I've got in the bigger one over here, the Actobotics parts, in separate drawers so that I can get at them a lot easier. So I just thought I'd throw that in there in case any of you were starting to accumulate parts the way that I am and having a problem storing in places. So at any rate, that concludes today's video. As I said, next week we're going to start working with the motor controller. We're going to put the board back on here, hook some power up to it, hook it up to the motor um, drivers, give it a quick test to spin the reels around because once we put electricity in the drivers there are a couple of push buttons on the Cytron controllers and then I'll start discussing the motor controller. Now the motor controller is something that we're going to do over several videos because there is quite a bit to it. Obviously there's going to be some code involved and there's going to be a schematic etc and over the next few videos I'll be showing you that and then we'll actually be able to get this thing moving. So until then Please take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you very soon here in the workshop. If you haven't subscribed to the newsletter, please do that. Same deal for the YouTube channel. So, talk to you later.